We're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. Wow, what a word the Lord has here. And it reads this way, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil. Man, I'm telling you. For our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Let's pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, is once again that we come and we thank you for the word that you are going to give us today. Lord, my prayer is that I decrease and you increase. I pray that they not hear the messenger, but they hear the message. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to use as the title today, Ready, Set, Go. How many of you, when you were little, remember racing with your friends? And the the charge was, get ready, get set, and go. Well, I'm telling you that right here, Jesus is telling us that we better get ready, we better get set, and we better go. So God is telling us in this parable, I want to take a quick look at this parable really quick. Matthew 25, it talks about ten virgins and they're going out to meet the bridegroom. Now we must understand that in this parable, the bridegroom represents Jesus Christ. And the ten virgins are the church or or the world. They think they're going to meet the bridegroom. One thing I want you to get here is that ten virgins all thought they were going the same way. But they weren't. Think about your your walk, your spiritual life. Are you really prepared to meet the Lord? These ten virgins all thought they were prepared. But as the Bible breaks it down in this parable, five was wise and five was foolish. The ones that were wise prepared. This is what God wants us to know, is that we must prepare to meet the bridegroom. We must be prepared to meet Jesus, in other words. Are you prepared to meet Jesus? And as we see here, five were foolish and they were not prepared. They took their lamps and didn't have any oil. They did not know the time that the bridegroom was coming. And that's the important fact here. We do not know when Jesus Christ will return. You know, to be technically correct, Jesus does not even know. Only God himself knows, the Father. So when we hear people saying, hey, Jesus is coming back this particular time. We know that that's not of God because he says, no one knows the day nor the hour. But one thing we do need to know is that he tells us to be ready. So the time of his return 
quite frankly, is not that important. The most important thing is that we are ready. And are you ready to meet the Lord? As we see here, that the wise virgins had prepared. They had took oil. Oil is a representation of the Holy Spirit. Man, I tell you, God sets this up great. So they had the Spirit of God in them. And it's likened to lamps. So we can say, hey, if we are prepared to meet the Lord, we have the Holy Spirit. That means we have received the gift of Jesus Christ in our hearts. So as they received the gift, they were all asleep. Look at verse 5. It says, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Wow. Wow. So while the bridegroom is tarrying, they were slumbering, they were that mean laying around, and then they slept. Does that sound like the church to you? We in the church we have five in the church we have wise and foolish. There are many people sitting on a pew today thinking that they're going to meet the bridegroom. But as we see from this parable. Not all that's sitting in the house is going. Only those that have received truly the gift of God, His Son, will be going. They have received the Spirit of God. But many are sitting in there thinking that they're going by their good works. Let me tell you, your works won't save you. The only way that you can get ready to meet the bridegroom is that you must receive the gift of Jesus Christ into your heart. You must know that you are a sinner and that you cannot save yourself. It is only by the blood of the Lamb that you can be saved, and that's Jesus Christ. And that's what prepares you to meet the bridegroom. And then as we see here, as the foolish and wise went out, this is a sad part here. Look at verse 11. No, verse 10. I want to look at verse 10. And while the bridegroom, it says, while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Wow. Wow. Only if you are ready, you're getting in. You can't get to the point and then say, I'm going to get ready. That's not going to happen. You need to be prepared ahead of time. God in Scripture always gives us a warning to get ready. It's just like he sent John the Baptist before Jesus saying, Prepare ye the way. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. See, he was making everyone ready. I'll give you an example here. I had a colonoscopy this week. And if anybody knows what that is, you have to do what they call some prep work to get prepared for the procedure. And if you don't do the prayer work for prep work, you won't do your they won't do your procedure. So I had to prepare and this is the same thing with life. We must prepare to, meet, to do anything that we want to do. We can't just show up. We have to make sure that we prepare. So the point that we're making here, that the Lord is making here, is are you prepared? Are you ready to meet the Lord? So what we want to take a look here, I want to take a look at a few more things here. We see that when the bridegroom came, he took those that was ready. And those that weren't ready, it says the door was shut. And then verse 11 says, Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, verily, get this, I know you not. Those are words you don't want to hear from the bridegroom, from Jesus Christ, saying, I know you not. Wow. This message today is talking to those who are pretending that they are going to meet the bridegroom, 
and they are not ready. You must be prepared to meet the bridegroom. And I'm telling you, the only way that you get prepared is that you must repent. You must believe in Him and repent of your sins. You know, they're not separated. They're tied together. Once you go into Him, you are confessing your sins and say that you are a sinner. And that you're sorry for your sins. And that you need Him into your life. Make sure that you are ready. Someone made this statement and it's so true, I want you to listen to it. It says, you are not prepared to live until you are prepared to die. Wow. Good Lord Almighty. What powerful word. You will never live a successful life or a full life until you are ready to die. But sad to say, many are not prepared to die. I like what Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. Listen to what um, Paul says here. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. He says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Man, Paul was ready. Paul was locked in to say, I'm willing to go all the way for Christ. But sad to say, many are not prepared to go all the way for Christ. When times get tough, when times get rough, we like to quit and throw in the towel. But I'm telling you, friends, that Jesus Christ is saying, get ready. There are some tough times ahead. And we want He wants us to be ready. I believe that this pandemic time is preparing us for what's ahead. And I'm telling you, I think it's going to be coming quickly here in January with this election um, recount, whatever they call it. God is preparing us to get ready. There are some changes that is about to take place. And God, people need to be on board. We're seeing things implemented already to show us that it's pointing to what God says in Revelation chapter 13. Make sure you read that. But God is telling us to get ready. Here Paul says he's now ready to be offered. Now let's look at Acts chapter 21 verse 13. I like the way he says it here. Acts chapter 21, verse 13. Then Paul answered, Oh, yes, Paul, I love it. What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Wow. Paul was prepared to die. Are you prepared to die for Christ? If you ever get challenged with whether you will denounce Christ and be killed, would you do it? That's the question. Are you prepared? Are you ready to die? Like I said, many are not prepared to die. They're not living. They're still dead men walking because they have not come to the conclusion that Jesus Christ is the answer to all our problems and that we must go before Him and confess our sins and He will forgive our sins. The next thing is, as we said, be ready. The next thing gets set. Jesus Christ has already set the table. Matthew chapter 22, verse 8 through 9. Listen to this. Matthew chapter 22, verse 8 through 9. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bitten were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid them to the marriage. The marriage is already set. 
Jesus has set the table and is telling us to come. But we are not coming. As the race says when we get started, get ready, get set. The table was set. But are you coming to the table? The good thing is that those that were bitten did not come to the table. So look what he did. He sent his servants out. If we are a child of God, he has sent us out into the highways to bid them to come to the marriage. And that marriage is to the bridegroom and the church. Look at what Revelations 19.7 says. Oh, I love it. Revelations 19.7. Give you a second to get there. Revelations 19.7 says this. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come and His wife have made herself ready. Remember, the, br the bride is the church. She has made herself ready for the marriage. I don't know if you've <laughs> ever been to a marriage, but I, like I, I just celebrated 30 years of marriage. And I'm telling you, the bride prepares herself to come down that aisle. My wife did a lot of preparation. But when you see that bride coming down that aisle, all the preparation that she put in, she was ready. Now I'm asking you today, if you're part of the church, are you ready for the coming of Christ? He says the church has made herself ready. The next thing is he go. James chapter 5 verse 8. James chapter 5 verse 8. Boy, this is good. It says, but be it says, be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. I know people say, hey, we've been saying Jesus Christ has been coming back for a long time. But the Bible tells us to be patient. Establish your heart because it is drawing nigh. So it's closer. It's closer. Are you being patient? Are you patiently waiting for the bridegroom? We need to make sure that we are busy doing what he tells us to do. And here's what the church needs to do. Romans chapter 13 verse 11. Oh, I love it. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. It says, And that knowing the time. So you got to know the time. He doesn't tell us when, exactly when, but he lets us know the time frame. That now is it is high time to awake out of sleep. See, we've been asleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Wow. So our salvation is closer than when we believe. It's closer. It's very, It's right at the door. And I'm telling you, all signs point to the coming back of Jesus Christ very soon. So we'll be ready to go. Now what does he tell us to do in the meanwhile? He told us to be patient and wait. But what does he want us to do? Here's what he wants us to do. And I want all the children of the Lord to pay attention to this little section here. And we're almost done. I mean, I'm telling you, we're almost done. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. It says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. See, we need to sanctify the Lord in our hearts. Is He really there? We need to make sure we go 
before the Lord and know that He is with us? Or are we still playing church? Because He tells us that if you have Christ in you, He say, He told us to be ready to give an answer. How many Christian people you go to and ask them why or how they got saved and they can't answer the question? I'm telling you that's sad because he tells us to be ready to give an answer. Are you ready to give an answer to someone that needs Christ? If you're not, this message should encourage you to prepare your testimony, your witness to a lost person. And that you'll be ready to give in. Now, Paul said he was ready to be offered. Jesus tells us to be ready to give an answer. To, now, he tells us to be ready to do this. Romans chapter 1 Verse 15. Romans chapter 1, verse 15. It reads this way. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Wow. Are you ready? To preach the gospel. If you're not, that's a problem. Because he tells us that if you are in him, he will make us fishers of men. We need to be ready to share God's word. So Christian, I'm asking you the question. Are you sharing God's word every chance that you get? Now remember, you're sharing it by the way you live. How are you living and people are watching you? Remember, actions speak louder than words. What are your actions saying to them? You could be preaching another gospel. You could be that foolish, those foolish virgins in that crowd thinking you're going, but you're not. The point is, if you're going, you're going to be doing what he said. You're going to be ready... You're going to be set, and you will go. But if you're not, as we see with these five foolish virgins, they were not ready. They were not set, and they did not go. God is asking you today, are you ready? Are you prepared to die? And if you can't answer that question honestly, the Bible says you shall find him when you search for Him with all your heart? Or are you only going to the Lord and giving to Him a part and not all? It won't work. He said you will only find Him when you search for Him with all your heart. I want to encourage you as there are some tough times ahead. And I'm telling you, from God's Word, they're coming. You know, as Christians, we like to say, hey, we pray for the world. You know, to be honest, God tells us not to pray for the world. He says, pray for those that will be saved out of the world. But we don't pray. He doesn't pray for the world. So I'm praying for those that the Lord will save out of the world. He wants you to be ready. He wants you to be set so that you can go. Now you know your heart, you know what you've been with, and what you've been doing. Are you wise, and you really have received Christ? Or are you foolish, still thinking that you're going, and you're not? I pray that this message will challenge you to search out your heart, and see if you are wise. So i like to just end with this. Are you wise? Or are you foolish? Will you be ready when he comes? If you're not wise, and if you're not ready, it's pretty simple. You simply have to, one, recognize you're a sinner. Two, believe that Jesus Christ died from your sins, and on the third day he rose from the grave with all power. And you simply have to ask him into your heart, and he'll do that. So if you haven't done that, I would like for you to bow your heads and repeat this prayer. Remember, it's not the prayer that saves you, but it's your heart. And you're praying this to the Lord. Say, Dear God, I come now confessing I am a sinner. 
And I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that Jesus died, was buried, and on the third day rose with all power from the grave. I ask Him now into my heart to save me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Now I'd like to welcome those that have received Jesus into your heart. Please drop me a line at minutesoftruth.org and let us know that you have received Jesus today. And for all those um, Christians out there that hasn't been sharing God's Word or not even prepared to give a message to a lost person, I'd like to pray for you right now. Father God, I come now praying for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, that this message challenge them to prepare their testimony, to prepare their witness to a lost and dying world. As you say it, Lord, you told us to be ready to give an answer for the hope that lieth within us. So, Lord God, I pray that they are ready to do that. And I pray that you give them every opportunity to share you with another. So Lord, we thank you for all that you do. For in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, I thank you for tuning in today. And um, next week, next Sunday, we will be doing a communion service at the end of our message. So make sure you have some bread and juice and we will go, we'll start this new year off right. So be ready, be set, and go.